NK 2K gotta finally finish this thing let's see is it all working correctly because it is time to rock on <coughs> yep I can hear the sound it's good news let's pop out these earplugs and we're gonna get started because oh my gosh we've been at this this roper for a long time ages like will it ever end no no it never will no I'm only kidding we we are gonna finish it that's definitely gonna happen let's get to our transition screen and there we are we're in business so I'm not gonna wait for people to jump in we are just going to um, get this busted out because uh, it's like this is part five of making a roper it's like it's time to finish it Hi, welcome to How to d d My name is Fred Weller, and today we're not necessarily talking about Dungeons and Dragons. We're trying to make monsters, and I have been for quite a while now, been trying to make a very cheap d d miniature, the Roper, and this is part five. And today we're going to stick those teeth in. We're going to drill some holes. We're going to put some toothpicks in there. We're going to use a hot glue gun, which means I'm probably going to burn myself. So um, you should be able to enjoy the the pain and anguish that I suffer as I try to do that and we're going to get this finished and I, I, I feel like I will probably mix up a little bit of putty just to sort of change the, the top of this uh, rope because it kind of feels a little bit like an ice cream cone with tentacles I've made an ice cream cone with an eyeball with tentacles it doesn't feel quite like a roper so um, this is why <laughs> this is why we're going to definitely put a bit of uh, more putty on it anyway Let's get rid of that roper because that's what we are duplicating hopefully. This is what we've been working on. So materials that we are using today, I'm going to be using the hot glue gun as I said. I will be needing additional glue sticks because oh my gosh I'm bound to use more than one. Uh, I'm going to use a Stanley classic cutting knife because it's got a heavy blade in it for cutting the toothpicks. Which means I do have to have toothpicks so I've got a big container full of toothpicks for this very purpose. I have my uh, Millie Putt. All of this stuff is in the description, so if you're wondering what I'm using, all of the materials and the tools are in the description. Millie Putt is the putty that we'll probably use near the end. You're going to need a pencil to mark things out. We're going to be using the Citadel uh, drill, which is um, basically the drill that's going to drill the hole for the teeth. And the Citadel sculpting tools, um, you can use anything you like really, it doesn't really matter, but that's what I'll be using today. And I probably won't need the pliers, but we'll see, you never know. Um, I'm not entirely sure just how well this is going to, I feel like I'm going to have to use them to hold the toothpicks to insert them into the holes. Alright, so let us get started. I've been talking far too long. By all means, while I'm doing this, you can chat to me about Dungeons and Dragons, being a player, being a dungeon master, making miniatures. I'm happy to talk about the weather. It's quite warm where I am in New Zealand. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. Um, and we will get started. So I've already select, selected my drill bit for this, which is the larger size one that comes with the set. And it is supposed to match up with the toothpick that's my hope that's the theory doesn't mean it will but that's the hope so I'm going to cut just a couple just as a temporary just to see how we go uh, just to see if it'll fit into my space as you can see you need a good strong blade otherwise it's not going to work out how's it going Joseph nice to hear from you Glad to have you in the room. It's time to get the roper finished. It's like been going on forever. How's it going, Keanu? Uh, recommended type of clay. I'm using the Millie Putt because it's cheaper. It um, air dries. It's a two-part uh, mix. Um, it dries fairly hard. And uh, it, it shouldn't drop. So if I drop this, it shouldn't break. And it's not as expensive as the green stuff. The green stuff, which I do have with me today, is a bit more expensive um, and it dries a lot faster and in this heat I just don't have a hope but uh, we're mostly going to be doing drilling holes and sticking toothpicks in so I feel like I'm going to have to go upside down hopefully you guys can see if you can't see you let me know and I'll sort it out so I'm going to mark some positions a 
feel like there's a top. I could just give him two teeth. Would that be would that be bad form? It'd be funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, I feel like I don't have to give him. If I put too many teeth in, it is just not going to work. So I'm going to I'm going to probably just apply just a couple of teeth just to give you the idea that he can chomp on you. And although I'm putting these pencil marks on here, that doesn't necessarily mean that those pencil marks are going to work once I start drilling into it. So I'm going to change things around as I go. Um, yeah, it's uh, the Millie Putts down in the description if you want to know Keanu. It's just, I feel like if I'm going to make a miniature, I don't want to have to spend a fortune on the, on the products, which is why these workshops are all about, you know, making it cheap rather than spending a fortune. Oh, that's it. I can hear the kids, they're out of school. If you get drop-offs, it's not my fault, it's them. They're all jumping onto um, Facebook and YouTube and... Oh, I'm on YouTube right now. Um, probably Twitch TV, video games, the Xbox One, Playstations. So I'm going on a slight angle. My intention for this is... Well, no, I'm going to drill into the um, putty, but also I'm going to drill into the tin foil that's behind and the teeth are going to sort of uh, poke out just a little bit so just like all of the things that I drill into I'm kind of I really want to drill in a fair distance and I'm making sure not to hold the tentacles while I do this so I've got to be holding the main bulk of it which is why we're putting these in before I start mucking around with the top of it all right that's you can see the bit of, bit of tin foil coming out right now. That's as far as that's going to allow me to go. So we're going to do that again. Um, if I am not positioning in such a way that you can see what's going on, you need to let me know. There's a reason why I kind of made the uh, the mouth section quite sort of um, Angela Jolene like. It's the reason being that is I need to have enough to drill into so that it makes sense and it's hopefully going to make sense have i played playstation 4 yes i have i have to stay away from um video games though i get highly addicted to them and i could wind up just losing my life so uh yeah just uh one of those things for me i i I've got to be careful about what I do with video games, otherwise I, I just wind up spending all of my, sorry about that, I'll move the uh, miniature over, I spend all my time just playing video games and doing nothing else, and it's not healthy, so I don't, I try not to play them nowadays. I tried downloading Neverwinter, um, and then I remembered why I had to removed it from my computer, it's because it gave me so many technical issues. I just wanted to give up. So either it's my computer or just not computer savvy enough. Uh, as you guys have watched my channel long enough, you probably know that I'm not exactly completely brilliant when it comes to anything to do with uh, technology. It takes me a little while to figure it all out. And oh my gosh, that putty is so tough. It's been dry for a, a couple of days now and it's it's actually pretty hard to drill into. Either that or it's just I just don't can't put enough force behind it. Okay. Alright. That's three holes. The faster I drill the holes, the better for you guys, right? Okay, there we go. And if I drill into my finger and I have to get a band-aid out, you'll have to have to allow me time to rush off to the uh, bathroom, okay? Uh, Joseph, how's life? Actually, it's not too bad. I cut down all my trees. There's there's literally not a tree left on my property now. <laughs> I cut them all down. And the reason being is I want to put in veggie gardens and fruit. I'm tired of having to deal with um, any kind of property maintenance and it doesn't feed me or it doesn't do anything. It just grows leaves. I don't have a big property as it is. But now that I've done it, I actually kind of like it. Uh, it's made a huge difference and it gives me just monstrous amounts of space to put veggie gardens in and uh, and and 
really when it comes to fruit I think what I'm going to go with low-lying bushes or vines I think that's the best way to go for me I like that idea the best so yeah life's pretty good I was pretty I was so tired man it took me an hour to recover from cutting down those trees and some of them I just had to literally just yank out of the ground I mean there were some of them small some of them big but yeah it's hard work uh, what's that Keanu uh, is Neverwinter a D&D related game I heard it was yeah it is it is a D&D related game basically all of the um, storylines for the RPG you know the tabletop RPG they are uh, created in a digital form and usually you can play them uh, on Neverwinter so that's that's why I was sort of I was thinking I could sort of introduce something else to the channel and I think maybe that's probably a good thing that I didn't didn't work out really because otherwise instead of me doing this I could very well have just wound up playing computer games the whole time and just talking garbage which I already do but it would have been just garbage and everybody does this sort of thing right you talk you play video games or you don't talk and you play video games and somebody watches you um, <clears throat> so yeah it didn't happen sorry about that for those people who were hoping it would oh that was uh, something we went through it's um it, that's that's definitely drilled through I just to be careful about how far I go okay all right <laughs> did it come out the other end no okay just checking <laughs> oh dear uh, what's that Daniel how long have you been playing D&D how long uh, it'd be about 10 years I, I, I would have to say I was probably in my 30s when I started and before that when I was a teenager it was um, Hero Quest. and what else did I play um, uh, Space Marine, which was of course a fantasy or sci-fi uh, sort of Warhammer, Warhammer game. Mostly it was board games for me. It wasn't um, wasn't role-play games. My first introduction to Dungeons and Dragons was through some um, friends at school or some kids at school who talked about this game with strange dice, and you just used your imagination and you rolled the dice to do stuff. And I thought it was a stupid idea. And so I didn't really get into it till much later on. It wasn't until I get to, I don't know, university that I spotted these books that looked really cool. The Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Monster Manual was what really sort of sold me. And the Player's Handbook and the Dungeon Master's Guide, which foolishly I have given away. Now, which I hadn't. And uh, actually one of my friends, Simon, uh, just recently said, look. I found a copy of these and I want to show you and I was like yeah okay you can show me but actually truthfully I just want them uh, <laughs> but I, I don't think that's likely he's um he's a giant nerd uh, and I'm I'm a jude of some kind well I I think I'm a jude so does hopefully that answers your question uh, Daniel Keanu oh I play sometimes but I might check it out Okay, all right, sounds good. And we are drilling into the next location for a tooth. I'm going to try to use glue to form sort of like a, um, a gum section. Well, that's or at least saliva. It's saliva for this thing. Yeah. Uh, Keanu, longest campaign. What's the longest campaign I've run? Okay, it was... The Rise of Temat, we ran from level 1, Horde of the Dragon Queen, um, the Frozen Castle played that after, uh, Rise of Temat, um, so Horde of the Dragon, Frozen Castle, Rise of Temat, and then we played, what did we play after that? I think it was Revenge of the Giants, uh, which I suppose, you, it, it would be akin to the Storm King's Thunder storyline, but I ran it before Storm King's Thunder was actually published. Uh, and I used the 4th uh, ed edition uh, campaign story for it. Um, I, I bought the box, I never got to run it, and I thought, well, I'm not wasting it. It might be 4th ed edition, but I'll just use um, the 5th ed edition rules. And we, we caned our way through that, and then I decided it was taking too long, and so I sped things up a bit. 
So yeah, that was probably my longest one, level one, right through to level 20. And would I do it again? Maybe. Um, always do things at least twice right before you decide you can't take it. Level 20 is um, a high level place, really tough to do. Uh, Daniel, what's that? Um, cool, thanks. I got started with Hero Quest 2 and started DD later on in my life. My friend uh, sold his HQ in a garage sale and, and is kicking himself now. Yeah. It's, it's like that, you wind up throwing these things away because, or selling them because, you know, they're taking up space and then you like realize these were things that actually you love so much and you should have just hung on to them and it was the wrong thing to do. It's not so much the player's handbook or the dungeon master's guide for advanced dungeons and dragons that I care about, it's the monster manual. That's really what I'm, I, I wish I had not got rid of because it was such a cool monster manual and whoop, we've got lots of holes in the uh, mouth now if I hadn't done that then I would have felt uh, felt a lot better about the whole situation but I didn't and it's too late to um, say darn it and I'm, I'm loath to try and rebuy them because I can just imagine somebody uh, charging a fortune for really old books and yeah, I'm just, I'm just not too sure uh, whether it's it's something I want to do. So, and also too, I'm, I'm hoping maybe I can find one of my friends who would have stashed all this stuff and not thrown it away. Uh, see if I can get it off them for you know, just a few dollars or nothing would be nice. <laughs> um, particularly since I'm pretty sure I gave books to them that were Dungeons and Dragons related. Okay, so I've got a lot of little filings, metal filings, putty filings, which of course I'm going to clean up later on. Uh, Keanu, uh, what's the difference between all the editions? They're just different versions of the game, different rule systems. The basic mechanics are still essentially the same. Uh, all, of, all that is different is that uh, they have been tailored for the audience that was playing at the time so nothing else there's no other difference to it okay so i'm gonna to have to round out these holes just a, a fraction because they're not going to fit anymore I keep forgetting the toothpicks are just a bit bigger than my drill bit and if i can get it to go in yep that went let's do another one so, how long will this take? It's going to take as long as it's going to take. I normally say I'm trying not to go longer than an hour, but it's just going to take as long as it's going to take. Sorry about that. For those of you who are sort of hoping to have time to go and watch, um, I don't know, uh, some soap operas or your favorite TV program. Well, you can anyway. You don't have to listen to me. For those of you who are wondering, why am I, where's the music? Where's my, my music? Well... I don't think royalty free music is going to be quite as interesting as what you can play yourself. So I don't bother doing that. You are welcome to play music yourself, but you probably wouldn't enjoy the royalty free music that I'd have to play on a YouTube channel. Anyway, so that's why there's no music. Ah, okay. Oh, we're getting there. It's happening. What's my favorite ed edition of the game? Okay, well, Joseph. To be fair, I would say that 5th edition is, although it, it's not the game I had hoped for. I had hoped for a game system that I could teach to very young kids who were about 5, and when they said that there was going to be a core rule and then a standard system and then uh, variant rules so you could play a more advanced game, and I was like, awesome, that sounds great, and then it really didn't feel like that. I felt like the uh, classes were too complicated for a 5-year-old. And it just eliminated them from uh, the pull, you know. I, I wanted, I really wanted to see the game played by a lot more people. And one of the things that happens is, you know, when you have kids, you uh, you can't, you, you know, you wind up stop, you stop playing for quite a while because you're dealing with kids, you know, you're changing diapers, um, lack of sleep, all that sort of stuff. Trying to get back into it is very difficult. So it can take like a decade before they're old enough before you can go back to playing. And I really wanted Dungeons and Dragons to be able to get 
uh, five year olds, even younger would have been nice, but I think five five years old is about right, back into the playing thing, in the game so that the parents could play with them. And that, that would have been awesome. What's the hardest um, to learn? Okay, well, I would say 3.5, but more likely uh, Pathfinder. Pathfinder is um, open game license. It's taken from the 3.5 version. Even even Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, it had so many multiple rules that it would have been quite difficult. But I think ultimately the most difficult has definitely got to be uh, 3.5. But if you if you go to Pathfinder, it is vastly more difficult. It is the learning curve is huge and um, it is designed for nerds. You know, it's designed for people who like complexity and actually relish trying to find ways of breaking the game. Um, so that is probably the hardest version of the game to play. Be 3.5 or, or Pathfinder. And, I mean, I played um, 3.5. I played 3rd ed edition. You know, I even played Pathfinder. Played it for years, but eventually I got to a point when it came to character um, creation that I, I, I just didn't really care anymore and so I just got somebody else to build the characters for me that were so hard and I had to sort of know all the stuff there's this vast quantity of additional content you could use and it was, it was just annoying I didn't like it so hence that's that's my my view on uh, what the hardest or most complicated version of the Dungeons and Dragons game is come on fill that hole here we go yeah yeah okay all right so we got holes and I have no idea if this is even gonna remotely look good oh, whoops there's an ant you're dead now okay <clears throat> so we're gonna sort of dry fit cut them down and then try another one uh, let's try maybe we'll go up first that's obviously too long so we'll pull it out and my little filings can go somewhere else. Let's just scoot this over. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Done. And trim that off. Uh, save there. I'm going to make sure all the little bits of stick don't fly everywhere. Um, he's a bit pointy. Um, I feel like I should just trim off the tip so it's not a stabby tool. There we go. Stabby tool gone. Hmm. Yes. So we'll dry fit everything. And then we'll glue them all in place. And then you can tell me if it looks like garbage or not before I put it together. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. I ain't entertaining myself. All right. What do we got here? Um... Joseph, have you used any of these miniatures in any of your campaigns? Oh, absolutely. I've used um, all the miniatures that I've made, I've definitely used. Okay, Purple Worm, Ropers, uh, the Beholder that we ma I made, made, I've used that plenty of times. I do tend to stick my Beholders in libraries. I don't know why. I always feel like they're supposed to be in a library. And, uh, and I keep making mine... Librarians. I don't know what it is. If I've got an issue with librarians, I don't. Yeah. So yeah, that's no, that's too long. I'm going to trim that down a little bit more. There we go. I was looking at the piercer after talking about the piercer, and I was thinking actually could really do with making a pier piercer would be simple as piece of cake. That doesn't mean I won't make the um, the mimic. It's definitely going to happen. I'm going to make a mimic. Right. It's in. This tooth is a little bit out of alignment. But it doesn't matter. It's just trim and sh take off the tip so I don't want it creating a stabby bit. You could use scissors just to trim these off too, by the way. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, what's this? Uh, Keanu. Having trouble with checks and when necessary to use them. Okay, so look, I have a video on when to roll dice. It's probably the 
the best way to sort of figure it all out is checking out that video. But look, there's a simple process. We can talk about it right now, Keanu. Might as well, while I'm doing this. When it comes to rolling dice, there are essentially four different ways it works. There is the automatic failure, okay? It's when, when they try to do something and it's just, it's just not possible. It doesn't matter what they roll on the dice, it cannot be done. And it, as the dungeon master, you decide if it is just impossible to do and there's going to be automatic failure. Uh, there might be a condition in place that means they automatically fail uh, a particular roll, whatever that roll might be. You, 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 you'll find, if you look at the conditions, it'll tell you which ones uh, result in automatic failure. Okay? So automatic failure, where you just do not roll the dice. Eh, it's a little bit short there, but that's all right. Okay, stubbiness, stubby teeth. And then there is the passive check. The passive check is when you add 10 to whatever the skill modifier is. And it might, often we just use passive perception or a passive check. And it's, it's a dice roll that you don't roll. You add 10 as if you were rolling 10 times Usually you use it when you don't want the dungeon, no, you don't want the players, the dungeon master does not want the players to know what's going on, what the numerical roll is, they don't want them to meet a game, and so you do it that way to make it easier for yourself to stop that happening because you know your players are going to meet a game for sure. Okay, so that's one of the ways. The other reason you might do it is because they've got plenty of time to do it, it is, it is just going to, they're just going to sit there and keep repeating the same roll, and that would be perfectly fine because they're not rushed. And that's fine too. You can see his teeth are looking a little bit odd, but hey, it's all right. So that's another one. Uh, then you have the active check. That's when you're only going to allow them to roll the dice once, and whatever they roll is going to be the result. And that is when you actually let them roll the dice. And there's got to be a chance of failure. Otherwise, there's no point. There's got to be a, a chance of success or failure, and that's when you get them to make an active roll. Yep. And you can do that for any skill, it does not matter what it is, any of those uh, roles whatsoever. Okay, next is the last one, and that is the automatic success. This task is something which they can just keep performing over and over again until they succeed. You know, it just, oh, oh, that, oh, <laughs> he's gone in, oh, I knew I needed the pliers, I'm glad, I'm glad I brought him with me. Here we go, oh, that was too short. <laughs> Whoops. So yeah, automatic uh, success because it's either such a simple task like climbing a ladder or uh, maybe it's something they can do repeatedly like I said and then you would just allow them to just do it and you don't worry about rolling dice or adding anything to it whatsoever. Easiest way to deal with it. Okay, so four different ways. Automatic failure, passive check, you want to hide the results. Um, active check, they're only going to get to roll the dice once and there's a chance of success or failure. Same as there's a chance of success and failure with a passive check really, you wouldn't bother otherwise. And um, yeah, and then the last one is the automatic success. I feel like I'm going to cut that down too much, I'm going to want to have to do this again. So yeah, easiest way to deal with it. And like I said, that video that I put out uh, will cover that sort of thing pretty well. Hopefully that answered your question, Keanu. All right. <coughs> and just let's get these teeth in. Yep, that's not going to go that far, so let's just trim off the front. <coughs> I feel like I will probably trim the teeth down so they're not quite so um, crazy. Right now they they look a bit crazy, don't they? <laughs> There's teeth everywhere. Oh, that look at that one. That's going off in a really weird position. <laughs> I didn't exactly drill that in a. He's got he <laughs> he hasn't been to the dentist. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, Keanu. I'm glad it helped. Um, we're going to come back to that tooth. That tooth looks just super strange. I'm going to trim it down just a bit more. <laughs> oh dear. There we go, and can I get a tooth in there? I don't know, kind of, 
Looks like it. Happening. Something. I feel like now I'm now I'm now I'm suffering from that I'm not happy with something. I'm gonna just trim this tooth down a bit. Just while well, I stick that up in there. And that might get trimmed down some more. But I feel like I'm gonna make the bottom tooth here. I need to drill it out at a different angle. Ah, where's our pliers? Give me the pliers. Come here. Come on. Just, there we go. Gotcha. Alright, uh, there's the drill. And, okay, so I'm going to try to change the angle so that I can get my tooth in a different position. Yeah, maybe that is, has that done it? Maybe that has. I feel like it has. <laughs> now I can't get it in the hole. There. I feel like that's slightly better. Maybe just a bit too long. Slightly better. Okay. Uh, what else is that? Uh, uh, Joseph, what would you do if characters are not um, flowing, flowing, following alignment like Paladin? Well, there's no alignment restrictions for a Paladin now. And uh, when it comes to alignment, I don't really worry too much about it. I require my players to breach or change what they're doing in terms of alignment uh, quite a few times before I will make a suggest that it's time to adjust their alignment or say they need to change their alignment. Because one of the things I totally understand about playing Dungeons and Dragons is that alignment can change. It is not something that necessarily has to be fixed. A lot of people believe, oh well you have to play your alignment, but no, the character might be a particular alignment and as time plays out, their alignment might shift. And that's actually quite, f that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but usually I require them to change the way that that alignment would work quite a few times before I will say, look, you're definitely doing evil acts. You know, you've done a lot of different things and, and it's, it's not good. Uh, you definitely can't call yourself neutral good or chaotic good or anything like that. You are... You're an evil character. And then I will, um, but like I said, usually I require them to do it quite a few times. All right, so I feel like we're getting closer. Uh, some of the teeth look a little bit out of skew, but hey, it's a monster. It, it can have bad teeth. Did that answer your question? And as for a paladin, you know, uh, I've had fallen paladins uh, who've broken the oath. Um... And that's, that's all right too. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a paladin uh, who is an oath breaker. And you just use the rules from the, the dungeon master guide on how to run a character for an oath breaker. Well, I feel like maybe some players like the idea of just becoming an oath breaker just for the heck of it. Um, okay, all right, so I've got some wacky teeth in there. Uh, I definitely think I will uh, change the length of some of these teeth because they're just either too long. I wish I had scissors. This is why, why, why did I not bring scissors? I could just trim them off easy. Uh, okay, what's that? Uh, Joseph, okay, cool. Answered your question, great. Keanu, uh, just out of the blue, what happens after you become a lich? Well, what do you mean? What can, you, you, you become a lich. You, you're a, you're a dead one. I, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what your question is. You're undead. You do not need to eat. You do not need to sleep. You, you are, you are, you are passed on. But you will never actually die, because the chances of anybody finding your phylactery, unless you're absolutely silly and advertise where it is. Uh, you know, it's not going to be as easy as um, Harry Potter. That phylactery is hidden good. Ah, come here, come here. All right, here, whore. Okay, I feel like the top teeth aren't too bad. Uh, maybe I can trim this one here a fraction. Oh, there we go. Just a, 
just a smidge off. See, this is why I've got the, um, the pliers, right? Because I'm going to have to actually pull these things out to get them back in again with the glue. <clears throat> I knew that was going to happen. Anyway. Ah, my little... Just, just change that around. There we go. Cool. And trim off a fraction more. And shoveling it in. Come on. You know you want to go. There we go. Alright, so now bottom teeth. Let's get the length right. You'd think they were really hard to cut. I'm just I'm just I'm just being a sook. There we go. There yeah, and let's trim this one again. You, you know I'm fussy when I keep pulling teeth out. Oh. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, no, that's not going to come out easily. It's, uh... There we go. If I can get that one out, we'll make that happen. And then we'll put it back in. Yep. It's a different size. <laughs> I guess I guess I got carried away with trying to make all the um, teeth like super sharp and really long. And I don't really need to do that, right? I just need to get them in. Have the effect of actually having teeth. There we go. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. That's it. All right. What do you guys think? Is that a uh, a yes to the teeth length and position? If we're happy with that. I think I'm, I'm re relatively happy with it. I think it's good enough. Uh, if people feel it's complete rubbish, then let me know in the chat right now. You have you have a little bit of time before I grab my glue gun and start gluing things in place. Uh, if you think it uh, needs adjustments, let me know while I just clean my area, get my knife out of the way, move my tools around, and prepare to glue myself to my roper. Uh, I mean, glue my teeth into my roper. Okay. All right. Yeah, it worked out all right. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. It's not too bad. Let me know. Not too bad. Joseph agrees. Good. Okay. What about the rest of you? Oh, my glue gun. Here we go. Bring that glue gun over here. I'm going to need the pliers because I'm going to get the teeth out and back in again. And I need a drink of water because I'm talking too much. Ah, oh, that's better. Okay, all right. Good, looks savage. It should be savage. It's supposed to be savage and dangerous. Dangerous, yes, dangerous. I am dangerous. Okay, let's, uh, let's go with the top tooth and a little bit of glue on that. Actually, it's... What, what is the deal here? Oh, there we go. Okay, right, got him. And ramming speed. Okay, I'm not even going to worry about cleaning it off because I figure that's sort of like his gum. And so that's uh, that's one. Let's grab another one. Uh, Daniel agrees that it's good as well. So that's a three, four. It's all go. We're we're ready for takeoff. Let's make this happen. So now you get to see me try to glue these things in as quickly as possible. Yep, that didn't work out that great, but... Okay, that's fine. There's gluey bits everywhere. It doesn't... It's, <laughs> it's, it's to be expected. There we go. Another one. At least they're going to be stuck in place. The last time I tried to put teeth in, it just did not work out. I had to do it multiple times. I think that's because I tried to clean the glue away from the teeth and, and make it look more impressive. I was trying to be fancy and it just does not work. Okay, yep, she's good. At least the teeth aren't going to come out. I feel, I feel like they're definitely going to be staying put. Oh, yes. 
We can make him. He's alive. He's alive. Okay. If I seem like I'm all jacked up, it could be the chocolate that I've eaten just recently. I shouldn't really eat chocolate, but I have. And... I was listening to myself for one of these uh, videos where I make stuff, and I was thinking, God, that, that guy's so boring. I mean, he says a few things, but he's boring. Why do, why do you guys come here? It's boring. Uh, and so... I am, um, I'm all um, jacked up on sugar now. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Uh, <clears throat> now I probably just sound like a maniac. Uh. Okay, so, keep it going. The bottom tooth. So making sure to get the glue on the, on the bottom section rather than all along on the sides. The stuff on the sides is probably going to just shift around anyway. So, get it on the bottom section and then in the hole and then push it down so it stays and that's another one done four more to go can I can I can I do it in the next tool I don't know 10 minutes would be nice less than 10 minutes would be good right Three minutes is the um, average um, time that anybody will watch my videos, so <laughs> that <laughs> most of you would should have, should be gone by now. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, okay, what's this? Come here, come here. I was what I was looking for AJ's uh, video on how to make a roper. Um, AJ Pickett he did a video on the law for the roper. And I was like, oh, I'm sure I've seen him with a roper. Where's the video on his roper? And I couldn't find it. It was supposed to be part two. It's nowhere to be seen. I do not understand. So I'm wondering if he ever made that video. It's a long time ago, so maybe it never happened. This is when his channel was a lot newer. And not nearly as fantastically famous as it is now. Oh. I think I glued it into place and it didn't go down. Oh. Yep, it's in. Sorry you can't see what's going on, it's probably best that you didn't. Um, some, um, some force was required to make that look like it actually would go in. <laughs> okay, next. Uh, where is it? Come here, come here, come here. Man, it's warm. I'll, uh, I'll reposition everything, make sure everything's straight in a second. I'm just... I just want to get these in as quickly as possible. There we go. Tooth is in. And I think I've got one more left. Racing for the finish line. And... No better fingers. Okay, so... Seems like it's in. I'm just going to use my tool just to make sure that I've forced my teeth into the. Okay. I feel like the glue may be just a little bit messed up there. Ah, oh, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Okay. If I brush his teeth, well, I'll be able to clean it up. Here we go. Okay, so we've got little strands of glue everywhere. Which is fine, it's not, not an issue, because we're probably going to build up around this gum and make it look a little bit like it's supposed to be there, otherwise right now it just looks like we just glued a whole bunch of toothpicks in there. The two teeth look nice, and Travacur, yep, thank you very much, they kind of, I feel like they do look nice, I agree. Uh, just got uh, real miniatures today and more dice, oh okay, what miniatures did you get? I, w I would ask about the dice, but, you know, dice are dice, man. It's uh, it's one of those things you just, you wind up with more and more and more until eventually. Okay, I'm creating a gum line, which means that the teeth probably won't look quite as long and vicious. 
but it is to sort of help me blend in to the rest of the mouth so it kind of looks like it's supposed to be there and if it doesn't then I guess it doesn't but all right okay so uh, I feel like that's not too bad from just the uh, strands of glue everywhere oh I've made a mess I'll tidy that up later okay and then just force that in there a bit yeah. am I happy with that it's a good question am I happy with it I'm still trying to decide and now I'm fiddling I need a knife, that's what I need, I need a knife. Uh, WizKids Icons of the Realms, which one? Tyranny of Dragons, Elemental Evil, uh, Tomb of Annihilation, Monster Menagerie, one or two, although I think one was better. Ah. Uh, of course you guys can't see what they're doing because it's just crazy stuff now. I'm just trying to fiddle with this to make it look like it's not quite... So, uh, let's see if I can pull it out with the pliers. I'm not trying to pull the teeth out. I'm just trying to... bit of the glue. <clears throat> okay. All right. Okay. So uh, it's, uh, we've got the the teeth are definitely glued in place, and I think roughly, the, yeah, it's it's not too bad, and I am going to go around here and sort of blend it in a bit more. Let's go like this and just, just a teeny weeny bit. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle. Use the nozzle. I think it's working out all right. Okay, cool. Let's keep working my way around. Try not to burn myself with the gun because it's getting warm. Of course, this doesn't have to be super perfect. Okay, I'm reasonably happy with that. It's not too bad. There's, um, so a little bit of uh, weirdness in some places, but hey, it's it's a monster. It's supposed to be weird, isn't it? Really, if it wasn't supposed to be weird, it wouldn't be a monster. Okay, so let's just uh, let's have a look, see how we're going in terms of our final product. I feel like it's uh, it's not too bad. Uh, what's that, Daniel? Uh, have you ever tried the D and D Nozzlers Marvelous Miniatures? I really want to grab them. Um, they come unpainted, but are a good price. They're not really a good price in New Zealand, unfortunately. Uh, if I was somewhere else in the world, maybe they would be, but they're not a great price where I am currently. I really want the, um, the uh, not the Beholder, I want the uh, Displacer Beasts, but I haven't been able to get hold of them. So no, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have them. You know, I don't think I'm gonna mix up putty. I'm just gonna use hot glue to give this thing a bit of texture because right now it just feels like an ice cream cone and Darn it, I don't want an ice cream cone. I want a, a ropa. So let's let's go bananas with the glue gun. And I probably should put like a bead of glue um, glue around the eyeball to get it to like the eyelid. Um, I should squirt glue in there as well, but nah, I can't be bothered. Okay. Just a bead of glue around the eye. Trying very, very hard make it look professional 
and fancy and like it's supposed to be that way it's sort of I just blow it up I feel like the other side needs a bit more of a build up let's, uh, let's do that again yeah. Yep, and blowing. All right, so there's a little bit of a something around the eye. Kind of looks right. I feel like it's all right. Let's just make sure that this um this has actually gone hard before I start attacking the rest of it with my glue gun. And I think I'm going to have to put another um, stick in here because I am running out. Okay. It's, it's at that point where it's just going into the glue gun, but it's not ready to fully be ready to, you know, feed through. Um, Travacure. Uh, the only thing I have ever made was a wood floor with uh, cardboard, popsicles, and sticks, and, and stain. Well, you know, now you can make monsters. Um, I'm going to try to do something with this top section and um, gonna just sort of go over the bits that I've already put there and blend it down and kind of make it look like it's supposed to be that way and then I'll blow on it you know me always blowing things all right I'll see you later I'm um, Trevor Kirk. Alright, I think that's sort of that, but let's do the front bit that looks kind of really bad, so let's just... And... Oh, why is it not going? It's not feeding through, it's not feeding through. Emergencies! Okay, here we go. Got it again. And let's do that again. Yeah, it's looking, I think this is working so much better than I could have if I just tried to use putty. Right. So, when in doubt, when the uh, the glue stick does not feed through, just grab the, uh, the far end that's not the hot end, and with your mouth, and then force it through. No, I'm only kidding, you don't, shouldn't, shouldn't do that, but I did. Okay. <clears throat> And we'll just running the glue across and then just messing with it so it kind of looks like it's an un normalish surface and it's got some texture to it because it doesn't have no texture right now. And I'm kind of, I don't, I don't know, really, have I got a technique to this? I don't know. I think I'm mostly just forcing the glue downward. Uh, Keanu, got to do uh, civics, homework. Oh, see you later. All right, I'll see you later, Keanu. See you later. Got to do the homework. Totally understand. That's important. School is important. Make sure you get your schooling done. All right. We're... And around, around there, down here. I'm, I'm hoping that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing, which is really, I don't know if there's a technique to it. I think it's just mostly just making a mess. I, I, I am squeezing it out in small amounts and trying to just force it downwards so it kind of looks like it isn't like an ice cream cone because um, I had essentially made myself an ice cream cone with tentacles and a mouth and I feel like it's less tentacled and ice cream cone-ish now
Yeah, it's definitely a lot less ice cream conish now. <laughs> oh dear. Which begs the question, why do you need to put the putty on in the first place, right? Why not just go over the whole structure with the glue gun? Well, it's a good question. Now that I think about it, remember it is the first time I made it. I don't have to be too pretty with it too, so um, the areas that I don't hit with uh, the glue gun will, will have putty there, which is fine, which is supposed to be there. Uh, oh, it's getting tricky to get at things. I'm going to just shuffle, shuffle this around and I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing, but it is, it is getting on. Oh, this bit is the fiddly bit to get at. Oh. See, this is why I didn't use the glue gun for the whole thing, because it's so hard to get at it. Oh, hang on, putting the putty on was pretty hard too. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Uh, right, well, we're, we're, we're actually not too far off, uh, would you believe it? There is a chance that it might actually finish uh, fairly shortly. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just got to look like a kind of a like a lot a lot of whoa, a rock formation. And a big couple of big blobby bits here and there probably won't hurt. That probably a good thing to do. I am just trying to sort of texture it rather than give it any sort of defining features. And, and I'm not really running the glue over every single inch of this thing either. Okay, so, right, so let's just uh, let that sort of dry for a second while I just recover, have a drink of water. It was, um, I, feel like, I feel like my hand is, is um, suffering from RSI after all of that um, trigger squeezing. And that's half glass of water, but that wasn't enough. I need another one. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's talk about, uh, yeah, Joseph, let's definitely talk about uh, Twitch TV. Yeah, on Friday, New Zealand Standard Time, 7.30 to 11 p.m. So 7.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. New Zealand Standard Time on Friday for me, not for you. That's in New Zealand. Uh, Twitch TV, we are going live. Home group is playing. Uh, I believe we have a, oh god, what do we have? We have a rogue cleric uh, who forgets that they are a rogue. We have uh, somebody playing, I believe it is a, a rogue, is it a rogue bard? Someone's playing a uh, druid. I don't think she's going to make it because she's going to be getting, um, she's going to be drinking lots of stuff with people and playing Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I think it's Drunkards and Dragons more likely, but yeah, essentially uh, she's uh, she's not gonna be there. That's Hannah, a new player. And then we also have somebody playing a Paladin, who doesn't really seem like a Paladin, but is a, trying to play a Paladin, who's used to playing a character that's more like a rogue and just takes everybody's stuff. But he's trying real hard not to play uh, that sort of character right now. Uh, is he succeeding? <laughs> Who knows? I don't know that he is. But certainly there's been a lot of jokes about the whole thing. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I feel like there was like one little patch here where the, the Roper's tentacle wasn't quite thick enough. But honestly, I just, I don't think I need to worry about it. So, so it's got eyes. 
it's got an eye it's got like a lid to the eye now around the top it's sort of it's it has got an eyeball with an eye it's got teeth it's got the uh, stalagmite or stalactite uh, effect um, with a bit of texturing it's got a teeth obviously teeth because it needs to have teeth for biting and it has six tendrils not four but six oh my gosh what was i thinking i was a crazy person look at all these tendrils this like doesn't make any sense whatsoever that i've stuck so many on here um actually i might go around the tendrils because particularly at the join where they are stuck there i feel like they need to have more of a build up um and actually i wanted to make the ends of them kind of a bit um bulgy didn't i do i want to do that nah nah it's just too much work okay let's just build them up around here squish the glue around so it doesn't look too like i just glued it with a glue gun and okay that's that one let's do that again you know what this means this means that we're so close to finishing we might actually finish this miniature there is not going to be a part six. Oh my god no no part six to the to the, no, this is not happening you will not see a part six to this video there will not be a continuation it is finishing today And, oh my gosh, I am, I'm, am I just getting completely silly now? Yeah, probably. Uh, if you can't see what I'm doing, I'm just because I'm just rushing now. I'm just trying to get glue on there. It's more, it's more about trying to get at it. Surprisingly really difficult to get at once, the, once you've stick, stuck a whole lot of tentacles on there. Trying to actually get the glue and then shuffle it around is, is, it's not so easy. Okay. Oh, he's caught me. He's, he's grabbed my little... He had, he had my glue gun. I knew it. He's alive. Okay. How's it going, Aaron? <clears throat> Episode 3 of Horde of the Dragon Queen done with the uh, inmates in time to catch some of the stream. Oh, okay. Cool. I need to get on to doing episode 4 of um, my review of... Well, not review. It's sort of like a Dungeon Master Guide for Horde of the Dragon Queen. It, it's, I think the reason why I don't want to do it is that particular episode, episode 4, I really didn't like. And it was like the continuing story of, uh, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Have we, what, what's the quest? It's, uh, that was the beginning of the continuation of what is the plot hook and will we ever get there? Uh, episode 4 and 5 uh, doesn't look fun. Nah, nah, I, f I felt like parts of episode 4 were fine. It was just a, so much of it. So, we are done. Um, there's lots of little strands off the, on this. I will eventually paint this thing. But I feel like the rope has been completed. So, uh, I'm going to just unplug my glue gun here. And, uh, yeah, if you guys want to talk to me, uh, you need to be quick about it because I'm going to take a drink of water and then I'm going to go and make some lunch or... And it's not lunch, dinner. I'm cooking chicken. And I'm not cooking chicken for this thing. It's for somebody else. Obviously, I'll be eating some of it. Okay, so if you found this video helpful or informative on how to make a cheap D&D &D miniature roper, uh, then... There it is. It is in all its glory. I know you can't necessarily see all the texture. When it's painted, it'll look more textured. And I know it hasn't been painted yet, but it will get painted. But if you did like this video, then please share and like the video. You press the little thing, the thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, then you know which button to press. I don't need to explain that to you. If, uh, if you haven't joined my channel and you like this sort of content, then hit that subscribe button and if you go onto my channel beside the subscribe button there's a bell button and if you press that you get occasional notification well you get noti notified when I do a live stream it'll tell you Fred is live and I'm often live and so you can jump in and watch what I'm doing and talk to me and chat and so forth things like that uh, what's that Aaron uh, with my home group I did a sort of a flash screen this is what is going on this is what you accomplished and D&D &D episode 6. <laughs> nice. 
So you skipped right past it, Aaron. Very smart. You don't need my help whatsoever. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to remember that, Aaron. That's awesome. Uh, look, if you want to support my channel, then watch my videos. Easy. I get a bit of ad revenue from that. That's great. I don't do Patreon, but if you want to um, buy anything online, I have affiliate links down below. And all the materials and the tools that I use today are down in the description, so you should be able to find a list of them and where you can buy them if you want to. And uh, yes, that is essentially it. And we've got to say, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. And there's my 20-sided dice. And there it is. No, I understood, Aaron. I get it. Flash screen, montage, skip past a whole lot of episodes for Horde of the Dragon Queen. It's brilliant. I think it's a very sensible thing to do. Um, yeah, so why not? So just a quick uh, quick talk about, uh, for those of you who are in the room, I'm going to finish up the stream in like pretty much in a second. But what can you expect? Tomorrow, I think I will probably go back to doing some how to play Dungeons and Dragons videos like uh, the Sorcerer. We'll start dealing with the Sorcerer again. Uh, those videos surprisingly have not been that popular, but I'm still going to do them because that's what my channel sort of based on. And after that, uh, you're probably going to get some pre-recorded stuff because my power is going to be going out on Saturday. Uh, but you will be able to watch me on Twitch TV on Friday, New Zealand Standard Time, 7.30 to 11 p.m. And uh, you can catch me there. And we're playing Storm King's Thunder. Um, yeah, so at really, this weekend, normally I would shoot bulk videos. I would do a live stream and then try to shoot some bulk videos. And I'm going to do that, uh, but I'm going to do a new trailer for my channel. It is time to do a new trailer, and I just need to... I feel like I need to let off a bit of steam, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, yes, I can't wait to see it painted either, um, Aaron. So, yeah. That is it. We are done for today. You guys go and have a great day. Have a sleep. Uh, go back to work. Whatever, whatever it is that you need to do, go do that. And uh, we'll see you next time.